Welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. Here's a bike I've wanted to film for a very long time. I really love 50cc two strokes with gears. And this is one of them. It's a Honda MT50. They were made from 1979 through to about the year 2000. And this is probably from the second or third year of production. I believe it's 81. And uh, yeah, five speed manual, 50cc two stroke. Let's go take a look. All right, and here we have it. This is the 1981 Honda MT50. As always, let's get started on the engine first. And probably my favorite thing about this bike, apart from the fact that it's a Honda, is the engine. We've got a 50cc five-speed manual two-stroke. It's a bit of view for the engine around here. So if we have a look, we've got the Honda logo embossed. We've got uh, Made in Japan stamped in there as well. Uh, you've got your Kickstarter here, carburetor there, a little filter off the back, uh, and basically a whole bunch of fins to cool this thing as much as possible. The one thing about these two-strokes is they give off an illusion of being a lot bigger than they actually are. You know, the, the barrel of the piston is way in there and it's, it's pretty small. But this pipe here spits out wonderful two-stroke gas, fumes, smoke, whatever you want to call it, out into the wonderful world and uh, reminds us that we're alive. They have a wonderful smell depending on what oil you use and um, they, they give quite a bit more pep. I just wrote it down here and you know there's only a couple of thousand RPM where it's actually spitting out power but the five-speed manual that it does have, um, when you do get that power on and the high RPM, it, it feels bloody awesome. If we jump up here, um, you can see it's an AD01. There is a few Honda AD models, including the Honda Raccoon, which is a bike I really want to film soon and has somewhat of a similar idea about it. In fact, it's got basically the same motor there. So 50cc, five-speed manual, it's a two-stroke, and it's putting out a small amount of power. We're still in the single digits as far as horsepower goes. And if we have a look on this side here, you can see you've got the shifter pattern um, stamped into the side there. I'm not sure if you can see it. One, neutral, two, three, four, five. So one down, four up. Wonderful little power plant, and it propels this tiny little thing on pretty happily. Let's jump over to the wheels and tires. So on the front, we've got a 19-inch wheel. This is a 70119 Shinko tire, and we've got a drum brake in the front there. So they've gone with a kind of motocross setup, or traditional setup, I guess, is, you know, a bigger wheel at the front, smaller at the rear. On the back, is it a 14 or a 15? Let's have a look. We've got a Ching Shin tire, and it's a 16. Three and a half or three? It's a three. By 16. And if we come around this side here, you get a bit of a different angle, but uh, yeah, dirt tires on this thing here. 16 inch rear, drum brake rear, 19 inch front, drum brake front. It's enough, it does the job. And uh, you know, it's only a 50cc bike, so there's not a dramatic amount of power really needed to spin these wheels. And if they were any bigger, you'd just be sucking power away. So I think the size of these wheels is perfect for the bike. And even if I didn't, it doesn't matter because that's what they came with. All right, so now we've had a look at the engine, we've had a look at the wheels. So that's how this thing moves, but what controls does it have? Let's jump up here to the speedometer. So we've got a speedometer that comes up to 80. It's got a green gear indication showing when you should use each gear. So it'll be interesting to see if that is actually ringing true to uh, its performance. Do you really go from uh, 60 to 80 in fifth gear? We'll find out hopefully, but in saying that, the place I'm at at the moment there's not a dramatic amount of good places for me to test this, so we'll see if I can get up to top speed or not. Got a clutch on the left hand side here, and we've got our high low beam switch here, which is snapped off. Uh, this might actually be high low, and that will be park light and lights on, lights off. And you've got your turn signal here, left and right, and you've got your horn down the bottom there as well. A key ignition up there, which just turns the bike on, and you've got to kickstart it, you've got your turn signal and your neutral light as well. Down here, we have a small little gear shifter for our one down, four up gearbox, five speed box. And on this side here, we've got a Kickstarter that says Kickstarter. So there's no mincing our words. We know exactly what it is. And yeah, old, basic, and awesome. It just goes. There's not much you need to do. Nuclear apocalypse comes along, this bike would probably still run. We've got a basic engine, we've got basic wheels, we've got basic controls. Now, are there any modifications to this bike? Quite simply put, no. The tyres on it are aftermarket. It's got a little helmet holder here, which is stock. You've got your oil tank on the rear, so that's completely accessible at the rear there. So two-stroke oil, of course. We've got our fuel cap here. We've got our fuel cap here, so that's the fuel tank, which looks pretty clean inside, thankfully. And that's about it. Throttle, but nothing, none of it's really been changed. So it's in fairly stock form. And I mean, it looks the part, there's not really much you need to change on these. You either enjoy them or you don't. And if you do enjoy them, 
you ride them like heck and uh, make the most of them because they're a simple, reliable machine that'll basically always go, you know, this was two kicks and it started when we first got on it. Now, are there any issues with these things here? Not really. I mean, the only issue I guess you could say is that it's just a tiny little two-stroke that's not really going to propel you along at maximum speed. Um, in New Zealand, we have a license category called moped licensing, which is um, basically anything 50cc and below can be checked on a moped license or a moped registration. And then you can ride that on a car learner license or a motorcycle learner license. But because of that, and because of the fact these don't actually need like an inspection or an MOT or a warrant of fitness as we call it in New Zealand, they tend to be sought after by people that don't want to get their motorbike license. And anytime one of these comes for sale, they'll often see people saying, ah, oh, can I ride this 300 kilometers round trip to my workplace every day at 85, 90 kilometers per hour max? And no, you can't. I mean, it does have a top speed. It's getting up there for sure. I'm, we'll, we'll test it out and find out exactly what it is. But it's not really designed to be set at wide open throttle for hours at a time. It would probably handle it, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if you want to go 100 kilometers an hour on a commute to work, it's probably not the bike to choose. You go get a bike that can do that. But just due to that license category in New Zealand, we do find that a lot of people just kind of seek out these machines, hoping for a top speed that's uh, much more than they can really handle. Apart from that, I mean, it's pretty basic. There's not a dramatic amount to show you, apart from the fact that it exists. It's a survivor, it's still here. 1981, what, we're 42 years old now? So this is a vintage model, technically, in New Zealand now. And uh, yeah, I think we should just listen to it, get it started, and see what it sounds like. I'll relocate the microphone closer to the pipe because I haven't done that in a couple of my videos. And then when I walk away, the pipe sound is disappearing. So, microphone, uh, here. Thank <laughs> you.